Okay, since everybody kept asking me about infrared photography on this camera, I uploaded a picture. I took a bunch of pictures of various uh, apertures. Um, uh, yeah, the, I told you. The camera no good for infrared photography. No dice. Don't work. Has a hot spot. Not just at f2, but at any aperture. It's got a hot spot. In addition to the fact that even if you look at the non-hot spot range on this camera for infrared, it's uh, no bueno, no good. It's not very sensitive for one, meaning handheld shots are difficult because you got shutter speed issues, even an ISO 6400. But the images are just no bueno. Now how could that be? Now here's the real question. This video is really about the infrared on the X100F Fuji. Since it's got the exact same damn sensor in it as the X-Pro2 and the X-T2, X-T2 has absolutely mind-blowing infrared photography. It's great crap. Now I know this has a fixed lens on it. Yeah, and even the X-T2, depending on which lens you have on it, could have some hot spots. The 23mm f2 on the Fuji, and this is a 23mm f2, however it's a different lens entirely, obviously, is awesome for infrared photography. The reason for that is while this has the same damn sensor in it as the X-T2 and the X-Pro2, it has a different grade of uh, infrared pass filter on it. Meaning that there is a less infrared and thereby also less red light smacking this sensor. This is a special case for Fuji. There is one, re and my, I've told you before in a prior video, the best out of camera images I've ever seen from any damn camera ever are from this damn camera right here. X100F. Is a Fuji, since there is only a one non removable lens on this camera, Fuji is able to design the image output on this camera to be the best. On an X-T2, X-Pro2, you got interchangeable lenses. You can't make it super awesome for everything. However, there is um, lens correction data set. When you slap a lens on, it recognizes what lens that is. I know about that. But it still, since it takes multiple lenses, it can't optimize the sensor or the infrared pass filter for that. This camera, however, can. That's the reason why, even though it's the same sensor as the X-T2, which is not so great, but good enough for infrared, However, the X-T2 is awesome tits for infrared. This camera is not. It's because the IR pass filter in front of the sensor. The lens is actually causing the hot spot on this, but if we ignore the hot spot, and the image is below, if we ignore the hot spot, um, the actual infrared images are suck-a-doodle off of uh, the x one r So yeah, no, this is, camera's no good. Uh, no dice for infrared photography. I've been telling people that, like, oh, that's got to be good. It's like, no, it isn't. Well, you know, where's the test shot to prove it? Well, you know, I took about 30 shots today. Uploaded one. If one isn't good enough to prove it to you, then, you know, go find out for your own self. So that's the answer to that. So it's not just the lens, which, of course, is causing the hot spot, but it's also the nature of the infrared pass filter. And uh, Fuji specifies what grade and what density, et cetera, et cetera. The infrared pass filter is going to be for each specific camera. And it's easy to tailor this one because it's only got one non-removable lens. That's also one of the main reasons, like I said, why the images are so awesome out of this. They're not awesome, they're actually the best I've ever seen directly out of this camera. And that was basically true out of the X100T, too. So I don't know if any... Uh... So I own the X100T, and of course I sold it off like a week or so ago. Um, but they are better than even the X100T. I don't think that's directly attributable to the fact that it's a 24 megapixel versus a 16. The images appear to be uh, overall uh, generally uh, better. So, anyway, thanks for watching. There's the information on the infrared on the X100F and the um, infrared uh, pass filter on uh, the sensor, since it has the exact same sensor as the X-Pro2 and X-T2. Thank you for watching. Catch you later. Bump it up.